Welcome to another Math GED video on how to find the probability of one or more events happening. Okay, so here's some basics. Uh, I'm going to start off here with some single event probabilities, and really it's a test of your ability to convert between fractions, decimals, and percents. Um, so here's just a basic problem. What is the probability of having your name pulled out of a hat of three people, assuming your name is one of those in there? So that's the favorable outcome. You want your name to be drawn, and there's only one of your names in there, and there's three potential or total outcomes, and so this, one-third, would be your probability. But what test makers are going to want to see is can you convert between um, a fraction to maybe a ratio as like 1 to 3, or even a decimal, 0.33, or even a percentage. You have a 33% chance of having your name drawn. And these type of questions often come up when you can't use a calculator. There is a separate screencast on this, uh, converting between decimals, fractions, and percents. Khan Academy does this really well, which I link to. Uh, definitely something you want to practice. The other thing down here at the bottom is that often fractions have to be reduced as well. So let's say, for example, you do a problem and you end up getting 3 out of 24 as your answer, but that isn't one of the answer choices because this can be reduced. 3 does fit into 24 exactly 8 times, and 3 fits into 3 1 time. So 1 eighth is the more reduced fraction that you would see, which um, is going to be 12.5%, uh, a 1 to 8 ratio, things like that. So um, you do need to be able to reduce and convert between uh, like forms. So let's dive into a problem here. So here is a word problem, and this is going to be kind of what I call like without replacement problems. Eventually behind the box there we'll get to it. So our situation is we have marbles in a bowl. We have orange, blue, white, black, red, and purple. The question is, Marie is drawing marbles from a bowl. What is the probability of drawing a white marble? All right, so if we look, how we're going to set this up is we want favorable over total. The favorable outcomes over the total outcomes. So we need to find the total down here. We don't know it yet, and they don't even um, kind of give you a placeholder for it. You have to be able to recognize you need the total. So let's add these up. 4 and 2 is 6, plus 5 is 11, plus another 3 is 14, plus 7 is 21, plus another 4 is 25. All right, so we end up with a total of 25, uh, and we want the white marbles, which is 5. So this can be reduced to 1 fifth. Test makers are going to want to know that this is actually going to be equal to 0.2 or 20%. Okay, um, again, you can practice this from another video. Uh, I'll link to in the show notes as well. So let's see this repl without replacement situation. All right, so if she doesn't replace the marbles, what is the probability of drawing a purple marble if she's already drawn one white marble, two orange marbles, and one purple marble? So if you get a problem like this, you need to be able to, um, like, r either on your own sheet of paper, um, create sort of a tally of what's happened. So uh, what is it probably drawing a purple marble? So that's what we want, but she's already drawn one white marble, so now we're down to four over here. Uh, two orange marbles, so now we're down to two here, and one purple marble. And so we're now down to three here. So, oh boy, pen getting a little weird on me. Um, so we still have two blue, we still have three black, and seven red. So now our new total is two and two is four, plus another four is eight, plus another three is 11, plus seven is 18. Now we have 21. Okay, and again, what we want um, is the purple marble. So what we have is 3 out of 21. This is going to be, um, did I, yes, purple. 
over the total. So again, 3 fits into 21 seven times. Um, so your answer would be 1 to 7, or it could be in ratio form, 1 to 7. Um, but that is most likely your answer. Okay? All right. Multiple events. So what is the probability of flipping three coins and getting tails all three times? So assuming this is a fair coin. So when we do what we want is we want tails, um, tails, tails. And of course, we have the option of getting head tails both times. Heads or tails are the possible or the total outcomes. So these are all one out of two, right? So now the question becomes, how do we combine these events? Do we add them all up or do we multiply them? And the answer is you're going to multiply them. Okay, you're going to do 1 times 1 times 1 is 1. 2 times 2 is 4 times another 2 is 8. So the, the probability of getting three tails when you flip three separate coins is 1 out of 8. Okay, chance doesn't remember. Um, even if you wanted to do a fourth one, it would be 1 half times the previous three, which is 1 eighth you would have a 1 16th chance of getting tails four times in a row, okay? So the key here is when you're combining at least simple multiple events like this, you want to multiply them, not add them. I get a lot of students who want to add them. If you think about it, if you were to add these, you would end up with 3 over 2. 1 plus 1 plus 1 is 3, and you leave the numbers on the bottom the same when you're adding fractions. That doesn't make any sense, right? So you don't add. Don't add, okay? All right, draw the potential outcome. So sometimes it makes sense that you have to draw out all the situations. So here's the probability, or here's a problem that tests that. What is the probability of flipping four fair coins and getting tails only two times? Okay, so different from the last question. Um, here's how I've drawn this. Using T for tails and H for um, heads. In this particular case, we have all tails. Well, that's not what we want. Um, here you have three tails. Again, not what we want. Here you have two tails. Okay. You could, in other words, the first two flips, you get heads, heads, and then the second two flips, you get tails, tails. First flip, you get heads. Second flip, you get tails. Uh, third flip, you get heads, and then tails, and then so on. So these are the ones that we want. These ones over here would be you get tails one time, uh, one tails. And then here's no tails. All right. So here is one potential outcome four potential outcomes. Here's one, two, three, four, five, six potential outcomes, four again over here, and one here. So if we add these up, one and four is five, plus another six is 11, uh, plus four is 15, and 16. So the total potential outcomes is 16, and you care about the six. So you get six out of 16 which can be reduced. Both of these are even numbers, so you can always cut them in half. You would end up with three over, over eight. Um, so that is your answer. You have a three-eighths chance of getting tails uh, at least twice if you, or sorry, just twice, I should say, just twice if you um, flip four coins. Okay. Now, sometimes I've seen the difference between theoretical and experimental probability on the GED, and this can be a little confusing um, if you're not familiar with the difference between the two. So the first set here, the first problem is going to be theoretical. So we're sort of predicting or imagining what is possible. So John is drawing cards from a standard 52-card deck with four suits, 13 cards per suit. He wants to know what is the probability of selecting two hearts from two 
separate draws. He does not replace the card back in the deck after the first draw. All right, so here's um, draw one. This is how I would do this. And then draw two. And we want hearts. So it's hearts over the total. So at the very beginning, he's got a full deck. So he's got 52 cards. We're not assuming jokers or anything. And there's 13 hearts in the deck. So 13 cards per suit. So 13 here. All right, so he's got 13 out of 52 chance or one fourth chance of getting. Um, we can actually reduce this to one fourth if we want. And now um, I'm actually, the reason you'll see why I did 13 over 52 for draw number two here. I don't think my, my two didn't fully right there. So again, we want hearts over total. But now we kind of combine this idea that he doesn't replace. So this is um, without replacement. So now we have 12 hearts because we, assuming we got one on the first draw, and we now have 51 cards. So if we want to do this, it's going to be 13 over 52 times, remember how we combine probabilities here, over 12 over 51. So let's go ahead and use our calculator. All right, so let's do 13 times 12, and we get 156. And now let's do 52 times 51. 52 times 51. 26, 52. So that's probably not an answer choice because they're both end in even numbers, so we can reduce them. Let me show you, assuming you can use the calculator, um, let me show how I would just do this. To, to reduce it, because I know uh, many students might say, well, how do we reduce something like that? So set it up as a fraction. Use the fraction button, N over D, do 156, arrow down, 2, 6, 5, 2, arrow over, and then hit enter, and the calculator will reduce it for you. So you have a 1 out of 17 chance, okay, of getting two hearts um, when you pull two cards from a deck. All right, so that is all theoretical. We haven't done that. We're just uh, we're just predicting or creating um, a hypothesis based upon probability here. Let's look at the second part, which is experimental probability. He drew one spade and one diamond on his two draws. What is the experimental probability for drawing a heart? So this is back in the you kind of looking backwards for experimental probability. So how many hearts did he get? Well, he's gotten zero hearts, right? He got one spade and one diamond. And out of the potential cards that he could have got, out of the total draws or total cars, is two. So the experimental probability is zero out of two or zero percent. Think about this in terms of sports, right? If um, you're looking at football, you know, if a quarterback – um, makes you know half of their throws they're at a 50 percent experimental probability okay um, free throws in basketball let's say you know your Shaquille O'Neal back in the day was not a good free throw shooter let's say he only makes a third of them right so his experimental probability is one third uh, and then that can also be end up being predictive in a way he's got about a third of a chance going forward making another free throw if your data set is large enough. So um, that's it. Thanks so much, and good luck on the Math GED.